Hi, this is Paul the Tech. I'm on the channel with my next build, which will start on uh, Tuesday. Um, I don't think I'll get anything done with it today. Uh, but anyway, this is the initial stroke early version of the uh, 263 eight wheel armor car used by the Germans during, during the early part of the war. And they used uh, different versions later on. Uh, the Puma was being one with the actual turret with a, I think it was a L60 75 millimeter gun in, it, in the turret. So it's quite a, a reasonable vehicle. Uh, but this was purely used for reconnaissance and, and this was the command version of it. Uh, I've always liked this particular vehicle because of the boxy shape. I think what it is and as I said and another uh, reason I'm giving this one is I'm going to I'm going to be building uh, this version which is the Rommel one uh, basically used by Rommel in France and, and I believe he was he was in, he was a commander of uh, seven Panzer division at the time and so before he obviously got promoted to, to uh, a, a general I believe and I think he might have got promoted to a general after the fact I'll, I'll look into that anyway because I need to look into that anyway but this is uh, the vehicle one of the vehicles that Rommel used as his command vehicle uh, during the uh, Polish, I believe, and the French campaign. Uh, this one's in the France, though. This one is actually the one he used in France. Yep, yes, in 1940. So there you go. So a nice looking vehicle anyway. So I'm just going to open the little box and show you that but, but everything's still in, this, in its packet. And you get a lovely art bit of artwork in the box, which is pretty pretty typical of AFE, really. Basically, they always do that. So there, it looked really nice, pretty plain. So if you wanted to frame it, it looks good because it's got to give you the kit stuff. But the picture is beautiful. And I must admit, uh, Switcher said, he said, if I was, he, I think he would build this version because you get the, the two tone effects. And I may even do that. But the point is, uh, I'm not sure yet. Still, but I've got time to decide before I start the build. So it's okay. And then you'll find out anyway. So right, there we go. So I'll put that over there. Next thing is your destructions, as I like to call them. Uh, and I will have a look at that. Uh, I'll have a look at that afterwards. It gives you a little bit of history there as well. And does it say anything about Rommel? No, nope, I'll have a look at that later anyway. But anyway, so let's have a look at the, the actual parts. Now I'm not going to take them out of the packet for this bit, this bit, just a general look at the bit. You can see how intricate the parts are. I don't want to break them. This you can see is all the actual, I don't know, don't know if you can see there. Yeah, you can look at that. So you can see the integral bit of all the area and everything. This is beautifully done. And you even got a little section over here of nuts. I don't know if you can see that. Nuts and bolts running across all the way over here. I'm not, uh, so, no, I'm not going to take them out of the packets, but you can see what I mean. So it's beautifully done. And this is a quick review because I think other people have reviewed the kit anyway. Chassis, that's going to be 100% straight anyway because they've actually got it in this moulded packet, as you can see. Beautifully done again. It gives you an idea of the size of the vehicle. So that's nice. There you go. Oh, sorry, I'll do that a bit better. The reflection of the plastic actually doesn't help much, does it? There you go. Even through the plastic, you can see how really good that is molded. Very excellent stuff. This should be easier on the camera. A lot of fine details, really is good stuff. These are the actual mud guards you can see. Or the yeah, just mud oh, we call them mud guards over here. Or fenders as people some people call them fenders as well. So there you go. You can see how really well detailed that is. Anyway, so there you go. Put down. Some of the wheel details. And uh, you can see how intricate that is, really, really nice. There you go. Very awkward to all these things up like this. Ah. And, and top chassis, like that whole top. Very nice. A lot of clear parts. I think you might be able to see those through the packet anyway. There you go, clear parts, headlights. Because it, it runs both ways. It's got steering wheels at both ends of these vehicles. So basically the driver could, it could have two people in the crew, uh, crew both drivers, and basically could, uh, can go in reverse very just as quickly as they went forward. That was the ideal thing about these things. And it was a reconnaissance vehicle as well. So this one was be with Rommel. If he was in this, he'd be up near the front line, which is he was a front line uh, leader. So there you go. A bit more. 
there's a, quite a few details inside, but once it's buttoned up, I don't think you'd see much. But I'm going to paint it all inside here and seats and driving wheels. You see the two steering wheels? Two steering wheels there. Engine block, part of the engine block. Do you see the underneath it? Don't they give you the top because you can't see it? What a lot of nice detail there. And you are seeing it quite nicely through the packet, which makes a change, but but uh, I just didn't want to undo the packets yet. There they go. And and there's a, the whole sides, lower sides. With the entrances, there's the entrance on both sides to be actually get into the vehicle. Inside this vehicle, there'll be radio sets, obviously, and a map table, I'm presuming, because most of the, the actual command vehicles had that. I've got a thing you don't use that part. I think that's to do one of the armoured car versions, but we'll find out when we're doing it anyway. But the, the actual details, there's the old instrument panel there, is really good. So I think I, I think it's good. Now the other thing I don't like about this is these are rubber tyres, but they, these seem to be quite nice. So again, what I should do is clean up the sims, and I'll spray these, uh, spray these a bit of a, rub, a warm rubbery look anyway. Because once they're weathered, they, they look really nice apart. There you go. And the last but not least, the photo etch. And there she is. Very, very nice photo etch. Right, and there's a few other vehicles they do. And I'll hold the box up a bit. So if you want to have a look. There you go. Another command vehicle there, over there. That was actually uh, one that Monty used, but it got captured, I believe, and uh, but actually Ron will used it for a little while and then left it behind. He didn't take it with him, as far as I know. Anyway, so oh, there's the other version of the armor car, as you can see here, with the turret on the top. That's about, now we've got a 2CM two machine gun, a machine gun and a 2CM gun on it. Um, a game reconnaissance, but this is a command vehicle, but obviously not with the same set of radios that this, the one I'm building now it would have. So there you go. Some nice vehicles there, I must admit. There you go. So right, move out of the way. Now we have a look at the um, instructions quickly. So there we go. So I might be able to zoom in a bit more now. That I know I can. There you go. Right. On the screen, it's making the print look different colour, but it's, it is black. I suppose something to do with the reflection of the paper. Yeah, it is. Well, here we go then. So we're coming down again. Gives you the history, like I said, on there. So it's, it is actually initial and early, and it's the uh, 263 stroke brackets 8 rad, which is, means radio version. It's now, if I can see this, Panzer Fankwagen. I think that's what it says. <laughs> it's German. I'm never very good at it. What I should do is put in the interpreter, and it would spell it out for me, and I'd be able to say it worked perfectly. But there you go. But anyway, basically, it's a radio car, rad, rad 8, as they call them. Um, Gives a good, nice bit of history of both cars with identical with diddly diddly diddly, bits of German armour cars with basket turrets, such such wings. The Red 8 was slightly behind the 2.6.2.3.1 and the 2.3.2 in terms of development, initial shapes. Basically, it carries on to say all about it. It does, does it mention Rommel? I thought I saw Rommel's name mentioned earlier on. It doesn't matter, he's mentioned it because it is a vehicle of his. There you go. So, anyway, let's get on to the actual destruction. Let's not waffle. Usual thing, blurb inside there. All the paint callouts down here, German grey, flat white, steel, silver, tyre black. So it even tells you to use tyre black. Um, wood brown and sandy yellow. Because obviously if you're doing the, the desert version, you could you'd spray it with pans of grey. And if you wanted to, you could then you go over there with the old um, um, chipping powders or chipping uh, fluids or hairspray. And then spray over sandy yellow and then start chipping around the vehicle to make it look worn. And I think that's what Switch wanted me to do. And I want to do that on a vehicle, I must admit. Uh, but, I, but I'm not sure I want to do it on this one. But as I said, I'm going to decide nearer the time. If I find out that he used one of them in the desert, good. But I have seen pictures of him in, in Kubelwagens and Horches as well. So there you go. Moving on, the first thing obviously is the chassis. I don't know if I can get rid of this black. No, I can't. So I'm going to bring the lighting back up to what it was. There you go, she's hunting now, isn't she? I'm going to have to go off all kind of focus. There you go, I'm going to go for that and... There you go.
Right, I did let it all kind of focus, and I think you can see it anyway. I can go down a bit lower, actually. No, I can't. Anyway, so basically, you start off number one with the actual chassis build up, a few, quite a few little components to go on this one. And then number two is carrying on with the chassis, um, bits and pieces here, of the cross members of the front, uh, parts of the suspension going on. And then you get to number three, and it's all to do with the actual drive wheels. Now, these actual wheels, you don't put glue on them, evidently, because obviously uh, an eight wheeler, all eight wheels do this. If the front two and the rear two, basically, if you're steering left or right, they both go like that or that way. They basically move to actually allow the vehicle to turn in a smaller radius because uh, there you go so that's what that's what the technique is and that's what these ball joints are for for both front and rear suspensions quite a little complicated little job there by the looks of it and the parts are small going on to the next page and we're on number four now and basically it's carrying on now building up what's left of the suspension to do have i missed something No, I haven't. No. <laughs> Building up bits and pieces and, fit it and putting it onto the chassis bottom. We've got a bit of here, the actual um, actual centre drive areas. The gearing, I suppose, it's where they all mesh together and, and actually drive, because all the wheels are driven. So there you go. Um, next week, we're putting the engine in. As you can see, you only get a very small engine. You get the belts, but you're only going to see the bottom of it, So because that's why I left the top. You're not going to see that at all. Um, fuel tanks going in uh, all the way across there. And other bits and pieces and, and structural leaves stuff for the actual chassis. Also, that's still dealing with the chassis from four to six. Sorry, down there. I'll, I'll keep forgetting that. There we go. Down the bottom here. Coming on. Then we go to seven. And number seven basically is just carrying on with the chassis at the bottom. See, so there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on with the chassis. Understandably, because there's a lot of wheels. So carrying on there. In fact, this one has only got um, two, three pieces going on. By the looks of it. Yep, yeah, three pieces. So it's, it's spaced out, so it's not too, every drawing isn't too busy. That's the main thing I like. Uh, then you've got your, your leaf suspensions going on. Carrying on down here now, and then we've got the actual, um, yeah, the driving bits by the look of it. It looks down the side here. It looks like part of the actual driving elements. They look as if they, yeah, you glue them, so that's not, it's nothing to do with part of the tracking, I suppose, of the vehicle's wheels. Carrying on with the suspension right down all the way through here. All on the rear chassis again, all on the lower chassis. Going over to the next one, and now we move now to the um, building of the actual uh, hull top, and this is the old bottom part of it, basically with the, the, the actual floor of the vehicle and two side panels that go up either side. And you can see the actual doors; these would be be obviously uh, be open or closed on the vehicle, and the model does allow for that. And a bit more to going over here. There's there's not much going on. It's just showing you, and that goes onto the hull. So you're building that bit up. And then you're putting this on the chassis. Now, what I'm going to be possibly doing is actually painting the chassis first afterwards, get get the colour down, and then coming in with this for the inside white because it's going to be white on off white inside, German off white going inside, like grey white inside. A bit of pre-shading. You're going to see through the hatches a little bit, and there you go. It's a shame there weren't any radios to come in here because that would have made it look a bit busy. And then you've got the actual foot pedals for the up driving it. Obviously, there you go. A bit more bits and pieces going on round here. All internal bits and pieces again. Then you actually go to the wheels for some reason. You still haven't finished inside as far as I'm concerned, but there you go. Straight in for the wheels. Pretty straightforward they are. Good thing is I suppose you could spray the tires separately and put the wheels together, and then you haven't got to worry about putting the circle on to spray the, the centre wheeler hubs. Over here now, uh, the front tires, it gives you an idea now, it gives you a choice now uh, of the valves that actually go in there. So Quite an interesting feature there. Then it shows you other bits to go on. There's underneath is a is a protection frame for the differential, which I believe it is in the middle that's there to protect it from all. Then you've got some armour plates going on. You've got a choice, three choices. So you've got to make sure you get the right one. Then the linkages between the wheels. Just make sure you put the right wheels in the right place. So that's why they're lettered D's and E's and F's and God knows what. Turn over, that back to the inside now. Here we go. So now we've got to put the seats together, the steering column, the, the handbrake, and the, and, the, and the gear shift, as Americans call them. We call them gear sticks, but they call them gear shifts in America. Uh, same at the back. Obviously, because this is a two-way driven vehicle, so therefore it can actually drive as fast backwards as what it going forward. I think I said that before anyway. And there's your steering wheels going on. You've got a, uh, one steer, the front steering wheel is slightly different to the rear one, but not much difference. Then you've got the actual rear radiator going on. 
count because you could call the front as well but no it is a rear rear radiator and, and then you've got the actual instrument panel going on to the the front now i don't think the back's got an instrument panel as such i think it's just a, a quick get getaway position but there you go we'll soon find out but i think that's the only one that's got it no they both got it by the looks of it no i'm not sure I'm gonna find out later so anyway there you go so that's a bit more bit down there we'll check down all the colours bits and pieces put in there and then still carrying on with the inside now this way you make a choice of uh, doors open or door close and it would have been nice to have stuff in there but to, you know can't be finicky it's a very well detailed model up to now or anyway then you start on the fenders making sure you get the right fenders from the right place the old vehicle so the driver can see how wide his vehicle these tilt out slightly out and they've got a lot of white um, glazed ball on the top wood on the top basically that allows the driver to see how wide his vehicle if he can get through that's the general general idea there good a number plate there obviously coming on the other side number 23 now we're still carrying on with fenders quite a few details to go on the fenders choices this is where choices come in again bits and pieces I think oh no there's no choice because the fenders are all different so they've got different elements sorry about that there you go tire black there um carrying on underneath a little attachment there foot plate off as a foot place so you can actually step onto the vehicle to get up uh, step assist i believe and carrying on around and adding the fenders to the lower part of the vehicle and then we go to the to the back and we carry on putting headlights and glazing on obviously common sense says if they're clear i do those afterwards or or mask them up after i've got them on there so I think it's easier to put them in afterwards actually. Uh, two number plates inside showing to the vehicle. Ah, oh, here we go. So that's where the so they both got the dials and gauges, front and rear, because there's the instrument panel that actually goes um, C43 goes underneath and clicks for the other driver, the other end. So there you go. So they've all got the instrument plates. A bit more uh, bits and pieces telling you what to do. Initial version and early version. So you've got the initial and the early. I think the Rommel's one was an early version, but I'll find out that later. There you go. And then we got talking about the grills at the back. Now the slats can be either opened or closed by the looks of it. So you've got a choice, which makes it a bit of interest again. To keep cooling for the vehicle. And then you they start putting an area on. Now, if this is what I think it is, this is an aerial. It's got the frame area on this vehicle, but you've also got this massive extension one, which you can actually build in the full upright position. Now, I got a case where I can actually do that now, but but uh, I might I might decide that because it might be uh, very um, temp <laughs> very tempting to knock it off. I suppose because it's a massive spindly thing. So the fold down version is pretty good as well. There you go. Still getting a bit busy. Here we go over this side, 29. And now we're talking about putting tools on, some more hatches, obviously you've got to paint them before. And you can see where the actual area comes up through. There you go. A uh, bit more to it there and shows you a bit of details. Now we're actually placing the top chassis bit on top of it. 30 again, all the actual increments, all the little actual bits and pieces, tools, spades. Um, the, the actual uh, visor covers, for actually looking out for the driver to look out through the hatches. They do have glass in, uh, bulletproof glass inside, but they've got a metal actually that covers over the top of them if it's not in use. Good. Carrying on, they've got early version here. So th there's a few changes to the early version, but the late version you don't get it most probably. Yep, so it's an early version you have to have put in that six, N6 into it. Quite interesting. I think that'd be most of them because the initial versions weren't, don't know how many there was. Over the upside, we're still carrying on there. This is the top plate. And as you can see, there's, it's very small, but it has got a machine gun. That goes in the front so it has got the mach uh, protection machine gun that's all it has got because it is a recce vehicle and a remark and a command vehicle so anyway so going on with all these little lads you've got to, um holes to put, put, put pistol ports as i call them you can have them open or closed i might be tempted just to put one open just to give it something different and they're on four on each side two on each side i should making four carrying on down here now and then you've got the bar spits but a bit more of um details next got l and k so you've got to make sure you get the ones the right size. This is to do with the hatches again. And now, basically drill a hole for certain things. Or cut it off, I should. Let's just cut it off. Oh yeah, so you can do that. That's fair enough. You cut it off in the middle. Soon find out. Anyway, when I get to the part. And then carrying on with the top uh, um, armoured armored, uh, command area as well bits and pieces and these now are these the actual supports for the rear it would run across the roof and these are made of timber so they'll be under a wooden brown now i wouldn't be surprised if those painted gray or spray gray but you can actually do 
you can actually do that again with chipping and actually or just tab it with a sponge to give bits where the, the paint's chipped off the wood. Yep, could do that. Anyway, let's look at that. Early version again. Uh, yeah, because the early version's got that funny wiry fender thing on the side. So, there you go. And this is what I was talking about, the aerials. So that's the main, the, the, the original aerial, basically. And this is the actual extended version. You can see how finicky that would be. But you have got that choice of using L30 and sticking it, stick it into the post. If you don't glue that bit, they'd be interchangeable. So you can have that built up and then stick it in when you want to. So... I think I will be able to put this into the, and the depending on how high it goes, of course, because it, must, it really is high. But it looks really interesting with that large, large area one. Obviously, that wouldn't be any use going along. It'd be using the mass, the actual the frame aerial, because obviously this would be when they pull up stack, they unfold it so they can give send a lo uh, longer, long uh, a, a signal further away. I'm presuming that's exactly what it is. Anyway, so that's it. And then you've got your know, front so armor plate on the front, uh, and bits and pieces there. Quite interesting. They used to put a load of luggage in. Now I've seen one other photograph of this with all fuel, fuel, uh, fuel and water caskets laying in the front and, and bedding stuff. So there you go. Because there's not very little for storage on this vehicle. But next thing, and you've got your your colours here. You've got your first seven Panzer Division Russia 1941, um, third Recon Battalion, 21st Panzer Division Libya 1941, seventh Panzer Division of uh, Vision France 1940. Now this will be the Rommel one. I'm sure it is. Yeah, it is. This is the Rommel one. This is the one that actually Rommel used as his command car in France when he was in command of the Seventh Panzer Division. So I'm tempted to go with that one. I'm tempted to go with that guy. Now, funny enough, that ah, the only one that actually shows the actual that bit on the front is the actual Russian one. Now I like that on the front, but of course, if it didn't have it, it didn't have it. But there you go. But that's the one I'm going to be possibly doing. Or going to the Libya one in 1941. So it's a bit, but I, I'm hedging towards this one to be quite honest. There you go. Uh, so that's the end of it. And then it gives you a, you know, usual tree call out of all the bits and pieces you can see there, and decals uh, and your photo etch parts up. But uh, I displayed here somewhere. Oh, there they are. Yeah, Just photo etch two sheets. Really interesting vehicle. I think it's going to be worth. Worth doing. Let's get this over here. I'll put this on now. Oops, get the right way up. And there you go. I'm leave it like that. I'll zoom out a bit. There you go. So that is going to be my next build. Uh, sorry about not taking things out of the packet, and perhaps because I'm starting Tuesday, I should have done. But I decided that you know, at the end of the day. I have lost a part to my Lexington. This is a very small part. Thankfully, I know that um, I've got five of the parts and one part's missing. I can actually fabricate out of a very thin pl plastic and then um, mark it up and scrub it out like the rest of the bits. So that's it. But it, for some, that's the only trouble when you build a model and, um, and sort of put it on the shelf. But that's my fault. It's in, it was in the tub and it went missing. So, But I can sort that out. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and look out for the uh, 1 16th Tiger final reveal. That should be here either sometime in the week or over the weekend, next weekend. Thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Happy modelling!